Tonight on Philly Cam Voices, we have a segment on Green Party candidates, an exhibit at the Philadelphia Flower Show, Act 40 press conference with District Attorney Larry Krasner, and a segment on the president of Sierra Leone's visit to the University of Pennsylvania. Good evening, and thank you for tuning in to Philly Cam Voices. I'm your host, Chinchilla Jonesia. Reporters Jamie Oliver and Shania Weich bring us a segment on the Green Party 2024 presidential candidates. Let's see what they had to say. This year is the 2024 presidential election. And with global tensions, national unrest, and federally indicted candidates, many voters are losing trust in the government and opting not to vote. Current Democratic President Joe Biden and Republican candidate Donald Trump are anticipated to be battling for the presidential ticket in the general election on November 5th, 2024. The federal government often presents citizens with the option to vote blue or red. Yet there are many parties that can be represented on the ballot, are libertarian and green. Jill Stein may ring a bell as a familiar name when you think of the Green Party, as she ran for president in 2012 and again in 2016. Today, we're going to learn a bit more about the Green Party. The Green Party was formed in 1972. An independent political party, the Green Party is connected to American social movements and is a part of a global green movement that shares key values, including peace and nonviolence, ecological wisdom, grassroots democracy, and social justice. Several Green Party presidential candidates are vying to get on the general election ballots. These candidates include presidential candidate from Massachusetts, Jill Stein, from North Carolina, Jasmine Sherman, from Florida, Randy Toller, from New York, Davi Deshaun Davis, and from California, Jorge Zavala, or George Zavala. We sat down with some of these candidates and take a time to learn a little bit more about them. America does not have the right to be the moral authority in the world. What I plan to do as the leader when I'm elected is make sure that we reintroduce ourselves to the world. We have the opportunity to demilitarize and denuclearize weapons. However, no one is interested in saying, America, we will do this with you because we don't lead by example. What this means is new conversation. Guaranteed housing. Right now, housing should be a human right. There's no reason in 2024, with all the technology, all the advancements, and the surplus of housing that we have, that anyone is paying a rent or mortgage. My platform eliminates not only property tax, but it eliminates rent and it eliminates mortgage. And if you are someone that's like, I own my home, we give you the money back. We allow you to stay there. But we put other people's minds at ease by providing them with constant quality shelter. If I wouldn't stay there, no one should. So the Unicorn Party was the first way I could get on the first 10 states ballot. Through the Green Party, I hope to get the other 38 states to have over 48 states. And then I have to find out the last two um, that I need to get and find out what I require them. The reason that we started with multiple political parties is to secure our opportunity for all people's ballot. The grass Tyson talking about the three truths. And a long time ago, I had an argument. And everybody's arguing, what's the truth? So it comes down to this, is that we have different perspectives. We're not being objective about our, what the truth is. Uh, we have a personal truth that we hold and we believe. And then we have political truths that we have to acknowledge and accept. <clears throat> but they don't align, do they? And the only way to make this change is if you can, if you can convert objective data <clears throat> into objective truth so uh, breaking this 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 lobbyist type of practices this capitalistic type of um a drive from these big tech corporations they're suffocating the planet they're, they're saying that these things don't exist these and what they're holding patents you know lots of wonderful engines and lots of wonderful technologies that are there that are readily available but because of the law no you can't produce you can't make i'm gonna lose your opportunity uh so they're blinding the people 
I coined the term back in the 1970s. This is probably a, a you know, a, a, nothing that your viewers know about called ecologism. It's the ecological manifestations of ecology. That is an alternative to capitalism and socialism. So I'm actually uh, writing a book on that. Um, that entails things like green IT, uh, eco software, and, and some things like that. So it's a, it's, it's a, a movement away from decentralization, self determination, self sufficiency, with the anti nuclear theme running out, running throughout, which I know is important. Round three, Mile Island. Um, so I have a real meaty uh, focus on economics. I understand this role, the presidential role, as a piece of the government, and I also recognize that. The government in general is not trusted by the American people. So we need to do the work to heal our relationship with the government prior to expecting the government to present any type of fairness or democracy. So we need this moment of assessment and pause so that the American government can apologize for continually prioritizing the short-term profits of greedy individuals and their corporations over what is best for the American people so that we can get to a point where we can uh, apologize for the countless wars, killing millions of innocent people, so that we can apologize for the allowance of harmful chemicals in America's public food, air, and waters, so that we can get to a point as a nation where we accept our responsibility for allowing our government and our militaries and our corporations to wreak havoc on other nations in the name of free market capitalism and spreading democracy. Really, a moment so that we can start together feeling proud of our nation, because that starting point is essential for us all being involved in the conversation and the movement forward of where we are now. That we have the technology now to make stronger decisions, not just better, but stronger decisions. In America, we have the right to place those in office that represent our values and ethics. At the same time, institutional barriers really impact the full possibility of our civic engagement. But it is not enough for us to say that it is inevitable our country will only be represented by two parties. For our next segment, community reporters Tim Milloway and Tom Coyle bring us a story from Joy Elizabeth Waldinger, artist, teacher, and a passionate gardener with a contagious enthusiasm who joins her family as they compete with displays at the Philadelphia Flower Show. Joy, along with her husband, Caleb Delp, and her father, Stephen Waldinger, and mums in laws Teresa Waldinger and Janine Delp, talk about their award-winning displays, their inspirations and impacts on society. This is Mrs. Joy coming to you from the Philadelphia Flower Show. So we're at the Philadelphia Flower Show. I was really excited to involve my family. Every year I always end up bringing another person along into the show. So it started with my students, then it branched into getting my dad involved, right? I think then we yep. started doing yes. father-daughter duo, and then, then the mom-in-laws, my mom and mother-in-law got involved. One of the newest additions this year is my husband. It's really been a way to keep our family connected and to just have something fun and competitive. It's been an amazing year, especially with the theme being United by Flowers. I'm in front of the exhibit I did with my students. Our exhibit was called Breadth of Time, and it's Mrs. Joy's art class. So it's all my art students, uh, my students from Artist Residency, and my mural club that I run after school. We all put our hands together and made this piece. I did this exhibit behind me called Orchid Echo with my friend Toby. We go by Tubers and Kale. We are the mom in laws, so we, our, our children are married. They will be having a baby in June by surrogacy and in vitro. This arbor is in dedication to her. We're the father-daughter duo. Uh, we did the miniature settings category this year and we've had such a blast with the theme. 
Uh, we did a miniature Oktoberfest inspired by our recent trip to Europe. Something that really inspired us this year were gardens that we've seen in the city that have been yarn bond, right? Covered in knitted material, in crochet, in pom-poms, something loud, bright, and warm that we really wanted to kind of spotlight with our entry. I am a uh, musician on the side in a band called Long Friend Time Friend. Uh, so that's why we decided to do a music store. Uh, you can see by the instruments behind me that we are working well with uh, flowers and instruments. I have family, we have family from Germany, Romania, Hungary, and to be able to learn about that place and um, the heritage components that we have and to create something inspired by it was really a way for us to come together as a family and to really celebrate you know, where we come from. Something I wanted to point out about the, the plants, uh, I, I made it so a lot of the plants were uh, music related. So we have some cat palms in the background, like Cat Stevens, right? We have a ZZ plant, like ZZ Top and Rubber Plant. So I thought that, would, that was like fun to kind of uh, have a word play uh, with a lot of the, the plants. We also have uh, tubes on top of the amp, like a tube amp. Um, so, you know, we did uh, a lot with that, and we also did a lot with like found items that we just found in the woods, um, as you can see by like the, the mossy branches and stuff like that. We have lots of herbs, we have lots of blooming flowers, and our goal really was to create a space that was warm and inviting on a, a nice sunny afternoon. Little stepping stones with her name on it and my other grandchildren's names on them too and repurposed materials. So we have um, tons of flowers. There's a, a couple planters that are little baby booties. We're gonna use those. We have a cradle, we have a chair, we have the stepping stones. My students are life skill support, autistic support, 14 to 22 years old. And with the flower show, with our entry, we really learn a range of skills and experiences. And with the push toward vocational training, it really gives kids more experience. PHS, there's tree tenders, programs, there's ways to get plants into our city, into our communities where they really need it. Just the big mission of PHS, the big mission of the program here is just um, the importance of creating a more sustainable future. It has a, a very sentimental meaning to both of us, to our whole family. So every time I look at it, it's not just flower show, it's also for our, my first granddaughter, for our joint Caleb's first baby, which was quite a miracle to even have this child. Involved with the flower show was a way for me to take my creative practice as an artist and um, merge it with my other passion of, you know, the environment, sustainability. It involves a lot of creative problem solving. We're gonna need creative solutions for our planet coming forward. And I think <laughs> continuing to foster these relationships, um, this creative thinking is really going to help build a brighter future. Uh, we took home Best in Blue, or you know, Blue Ribbon, and we came this past Thursday and it was a blast, just kind of seeing their reactions. But I also didn't tell them we won first. So to see that reaction on the floor was incredible. This year we got third place the second time around. We also got an honorable mention. We just really enjoyed this year's theme of United by Flowers. This piece I think also really is a, a symbol for that, of everybody coming together, many different hands to create a piece that we feel really proud of. We're truly United by Flowers. <laughs>
I'm Dr. Chinchilla Jonicia, aka Chinchilla J, the Queen of Justice, and we are here today at the press conference held by District Attorney Larry Krasner. This is a press conference to announce the fact that the District Attorney's Office is going to court to stop the implementation of an unconstitutional and illegal law that robs Philadelphia voters and only Philadelphia voters of their votes. When I made the unexpected decision to run for DA in 2017, I thought that meant district attorney. I didn't know that DA actually stood for democracy advocate. <laughs> this supposed SEPTA bill is not a SEPTA bill at all, as you will soon hear. This is straight up an effort to erase the votes of 155,102 people who struggled through the inconvenience of voting so they would be heard in an election that was won with a margin of 44%. That is what we are talking about. It is wearing a Halloween costume, and that Halloween costume is that it has something to do with SEPTA, but as you will soon see from the maps that we are gonna show you, it actually means that almost all the criminal cases in the city of Philadelphia would belong to a special prosecutor who was elected by no one and didn't even run. If you're within 500 yards of any of those 8,175 stops, that special prosecutor can come in and displace District Attorney Krasner and this entire office. How much of Philadelphia is left for this office. This is what Act 40 is, is, is trying to do. So everything you see in red, these are all SEPTA bus stops, SEPTA. All this is SEPTA's property. All these red areas, those are SEPTA's bus stops. So 89% of Philadelphia's land mass, SEPTA owns, okay? And so in 2023, it says 95% of all criminal incidents in Philadelphia occurred in the shaded areas. The main sponsor of this bill, whose name is Langerlook, from the Johnstown area, represents a piece of three different counties. Those counties may hold more state prisons than any other chunk of this state. There are four, four state correctional facilities within his purview. And guess what they need? They need inmates. What we have experienced in Pennsylvania historically is that Philadelphia provided 23% of the state inmates. Well, the state prison population is going down. Yes. And when a county is going to make something like $60,000 a year per inmate, what does it mean to that county or group of counties with four state prisons to lose a thousand inmates? A thousand times 60,000 is $60 million a year. DA Krasner, if it wasn't for him, guess what? Men and women would not have been exonerated in this city such as these men here, these exonerees behind me, they're all doing something positive. This bill was done in the back door. They brought it in through the back door. But in 2024, we say no more. First of all, this bill didn't even follow the appropriate legislative process. It was, it, it came through the Transportation Committee, and, and we have subject matter rules. So it was posing to be a transportation bill, but this is not a transportation bill. This is a bill about who gets to prosecute cases. It did not go through the Judiciary Committee. It did not go through the Law and Justice Committee. We got multiple committees where it would have been subject matter appropriate, but it didn't, we didn't follow, it didn't follow any of that because the maker, who's the chair of the Transportation Committee, wanted to send it through his own committee. Very proud to stand here today with District Attorney Larry Krasner and many, many community leaders across Philadelphia. I am here to support our District Attorney, um, and I pray that this legal uh, challenge is successful against this racist, um, de undemocratic. The right-wing war on democracy continues, as we have heard this morning, uh, and continues to wage war on our democratic rights as well as our pocketbooks. This is an unconstitutional act that once again they cannot try this again in the future. Philadelphia has, has both 
more religious diversity and more racial diversity than any other county in the Commonwealth. And so this definitely does not meet strict scrutiny. It is unconstitutional. I'm calling out every politician that signed on to this legislation. Mm -hmm. You have betrayed us. Yes. You have let us down. We have a duly elected district attorney yes. by the citizens of yes. the city of I Philadelphia I that is responsible for prosecution in the city of Philadelphia. That's our decision, yes. and that's, that's right. nobody that's else's. Right. It appears that my vote was stolen. So I'm here today to say that I want to report that and get my vote back. People have always tried to take from us that which has been hard fought and hard won. Yes. We're here because when we fight, we, we win. win. When we fight, we, we win. We are here to be treated equally like the rest of the state, to have every single one of our votes counted, and to uphold this democracy <clears throat> in the birthplace of democracy. Yes. And any elected official who will not stand up for that has violated the tradition of Martin Luther King. Any elected official who will not stand up for that is not a profile of courage, that is a profile in cowardice. Any elected official who will not stand up to that doesn't deserve to be an elected official. Why wait for the change when you can be a part of it? We're not leaving until we get what was stolen from us. Give us our votes back. Janibra Karoma brings highlights of public lecture by His Excellency, Dr. Julius Mada Bio, President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, at the third annual Distinguished Lecture in African Studies, University of Pennsylvania, on Monday, March 25, 2024, on the theme, Navigating the Future Democracy, Progressive Politics, and Inclusive Development in Africa, the Sierra Leone Experience. President Bio is the only leader in Sierra Leone history to have led the country two times. First as military head of state and now as a two-term democratically elected president. As military head of state in 1996, our special guest today was in office for only three months, within which he opened discussions with the rebels to end the bloody civil war in the country. Choosing to relinquish power, especially as a young leader, who could have justified holding on to power was not merely a personal decision, but a declaration of my commitment to democratic governance. <laughs> this pivotal moment in our history served as a bedrock for the enduring peace we enjoy today. And I mean the honor of being referred to in Sierra Leone today as the father of democracy. So your main challenger in the June 2023 presidential election, the candidate of the APC rejected the results of the elections and uh, he stated that the results were not credible. The EU observers also stated you know, that uh, the lack of transparency by the electoral authority led to mistrust. Uh, there were also allegations of violence. So how would you react to the criticisms and allegations on the conduct of the elections which you, in which you were the winner? Uh, it's only because I didn't want to waste of time I would have called for a repeat. <laughs> <laughs> I know I can beat this man down, hands down, any time. <laughs> and with all what we have done to change the narrative for Syria, here, we have reduced maternal mortality by 61%. We have come back to the world stage, you know, uh, to be uh, elected by 198 uh, 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 um, nations around the world to go back to the UN Security Council in a non-permanent category. With all of these, taking all the kids back to school. Um. Thanks for the presentation and the grace of the, for gracing this time. Um, in the United States, there's a program that provides subsidies for small businesses and for entrepreneurs, and I'm an aspired entrepreneur. So my question is, uh, is that what, 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 what provision have you put in place for young entrepreneurs like me who want to make a mobile app that will aid in the health sector? Oh, uh, let me just answer. I think um, 
Um, uh, you uh, definitely um, asking the right question. We've been working on that to make sure that we don't only. One of the reasons why we have a lot of unemployment is because uh, uh, we churn out a lot of graduates, but of course the workspace is not there for them. The government cannot, um, you know, and the, uh, the, the economy has not ex ex expanded uh, at a rate to take in everybody. But if you start your own business, you do not only employ yourself, but you also get to employ more people. Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me. Of course, the president spoke eloquently and passionately about the need to include the youth in governance at every level. Uh, he underscored that the youth are in the majority of the population, and as such, the youth must be included in our, in, you know, in, in our drive towards national development. And that was very, very important for me uh, as one of his advisors, especially on youth. Uh, we are so happy to receive him in Philadelphia. This is the first time in history the president of Morocco, Sierra Leone, to come in Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. So we appreciate him and we bless him. May God bless our country and may God bless our country. I feel great. I feel honored to be able to visit this campus and listen to the president of Sierra Leone come give this wonderful lecture that educates us on what's going on in Sierra Leone, the development and how it relates to um, our youth and um, development growing moving forward in Sierra Leone. You have just watched or listened to the lecture given by the President of Sierra Leone. His Excellency Richard Bikichi Julius Mada Bio. I am Jennifer Kuroma reporting for Philippine Voices from the University of Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. I thank you for tuning in to this episode of Philly Cam Voices. You can also watch us on YouTube and Roku and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'll see you next time.